Hello? Darren. Yeah, hello, mate. Yeah, it's James Haskell. No, James Haskell, you know, tall, blonde, former rugby player, gets a load of cards from you. Yeah, that's me, yeah. You didn't give me a favour, pick me up, could you? I'm just at my car garage, the storage place, yeah, I need to go for a ride. All right, cheers, brother. All right, speak to you later, mate, thanks. Hello, mate. How are you? Very well. Nice little side steps here. Thanks for doing this. I was, <laughs> I was stuffed, mate. You always come Good to the rescue. You. Good to see you. The no, man no with problem. the magic calculator appears. <laughs> it's just lucky I was nearby. Yeah, thank God for that. We always <laughs> lurking around for a deal. Absolutely, absolutely. So how's things been? Yeah, good, really good actually. Yeah, nice. Just um, looking to sell my Ferrari at the moment. Oh. Obviously you helped me get that, so that's quite nice. Um, life's treating me quite well, reasonably well. I'm sort of um, do it or DJ. I've got my second house track coming out at the end of August. Yes. Um, done, done all the Lions coverage stuff at the moment for Talk Sport, which is quite cool. So. Yeah. I'm all right, mate. You know, getting slightly older, limping slightly more, but yes. um, otherwise, nothing to complain about, really. Superb. superb. What about yourself? Well, busy, busy. The market is uh, seriously busy, uh, which is is great to see. Uh, seems to be busy across the board, so can't complain on that front. But uh, well, listen, thanks for you know uh, letting me uh, give you a lift, and uh, it'd be great just to have a run through what you're up to, as we say touching a few things uh, rugby of course Fine. and uh, let's talk about cars too of course yeah, another of course. passion of yours it's nice to see where my my commission and bits has got you <laughs> with your nice little <laughs> Range Rover well, Vogue with your, well, you know the, the lovely don't worry, it's all on finance though it's oh yeah, finance. yeah come on chief don't mess around now you know there's no point having a magic calculator if you need one yourself I'll tell you what it's uh, I think I need that thing more than anybody <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well listen you've obviously uh, uh, made a real name for yourself now outside of the world of uh, it was a cricket you played was it? yeah uh, 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 do, do you want to tell everyone a story about that so when we first <laughs> we actually first got connected uh, um, yeah, you, I'll let you tell them yeah, you know, I got your number. I was like, this. I'm, I'm actually thinking about getting a car. Um, I wanted to treat myself once I finished playing. And I remember speaking to you, called me up, and you were like, yeah, I know, I know all about you, an ex-cricket player and stuff. And I was like, new. No. Darren, close, but uh, no cigar. And I remember you were like, water bike, call me out. I was like, ah, you know, God, I was having a joke. I was like, don't think you were, pal, but it's, well, okay, it's okay. But I don't, I don't, I didn't care. I remember I said to you, I don't care. It was more about, um, you know, can we work the numbers? And obviously, yeah. you know, we've, this is probably, we're coming to our third or fourth car now. Um, we've yes. done together. That's right. Um, you obviously helped my wife as well. So yeah, I mean, you're pro essentially part of the, <laughs> part of the family. Like a weird old uncle that we don't really ever, we see exactly. only when we need you. You, Chloe, Bert, and me—that's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, so I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, I, I finished playing now uh, a couple of years ago, twenty years ago. Uh, I went to I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here, um, and did that. And that's probably the most well-known thing. Um, I've been DJing for the last nine years. Obviously, really one of my real kind of passions. Um, got a couple of podcasts. Good, the bad, rugby, and what a flank obviously centered around rugby. Oh, um, yes. And also, kind of, people I'm sort of interested in and intrigued to, to chat to. Mm -hmm. And then, kind of, art, you know, aside from that, really, um, just all the usual sort of media whoring things I do. You know, if there's a, <laughs> if there's a camera and someone wants me to perform, then um, I shall appear. If you say my name three times and throw a bit of cash my way, I'm there. <laughs> Well, I'm sure this will probably uh, elicit uh, some some illustrious brand deals for you, no doubt. I hope so. Well, you're, trying, you're going to make me more big time, are you? Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and, and we, well, um, recall when we uh, managed to secure the uh, at James Haskell. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah God. Fuck, you know, I should, for, <laughs> I should never forget all the deals and favours you've done me, yeah. So, Darren, very kindly, I was on Instagram, I was at James Hask, and uh, Darren worked his magic, the absolute networker, www.network.com forward slash Darren, and you will, you will find him. And he, um, yeah, he got me sorted out with my actual my name on on uh, social media because yeah. some bloke hanging on to it and wasn't using it. That so was it. someone was squatting on your uh, yeah. on your actual name. So and you turned um, around in forty eight hours, if I remember. Well, yeah, don't don't ask me how I did it because uh, oh. I uh, I think I had somebody uh, removed off the old gram over it. Yeah. But anyway, we uh, we managed to get it sorted, and uh, there we are. Yeah. And, and, then, you and you took me for lunch one day as well. <laughs> that was or was it. I, yeah, did I take you? I can't remember. Well, Whatever it was, it was a blur, but it involved me picking up my car. No, no, you're you're and, definitely uh, doing the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I am actually, 100%. But, uh, well listen, as I say, uh, all things rugby clearly, we can't, can't do this without talking about rugby. Uh, 
give us a brief synopsis of your overall rugby career with England and uh, all the teams you played with and uh, uh, what the yeah well journey well so I mean I started uh, when I was 17 um, in terms of my professional career with London Wasps, as they were known. Yeah. Played with them for five years, left, went to Stade Francais in Paris, played in Paris for two years with some of the best players in the world, um, had a living the dream. Left Paris, went to um, Japan, played in Japan with Ma Nonu and Tamati Ellis and a few other guys for the Rico Black Rams. Left there after the season and went to the Highlanders in the Super 15. Uh, played with Aaron Smith um, and an incredible Highlanders team under Jamie Joseph, who's now the Japan coach. Left there, went back to Wasps for six years, got to Premiership final. Um, and uh, finished in Northampton, uh, an amazing club. And then basically along the way, I got 77 caps for England, played for the British and Irish Lions, uh, won the Heineken Cup twice, Premiership twice. Um, Six, uh, six Nations three times including Grand Slam um, you know Maidenhead Rugby Club's under 12's most improved player so I pretty much <laughs> peaked and I won Celebrity Mastermind the other day so not only am um, I big I'm, I know my BLT big lean and sand I am also a bit of a quadruple threat you've got the brains to burn and you're asking what the, the fourth thing is what's the fourth funny as fuck so <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking i'm only, oh, I'm only well. playing up because obviously we're not pretending we're not on camera but we absolutely, no, absolutely. are <laughs> and uh, you mentioned the lions are clearly the uh, the test is on at the moment down in south africa yeah you were supposed to be there no yes i was i suppose i was very kindly got picked up by talk sport to do their commentary was there for six was going to be there for six games was about to fly out on the 11th but unfortunately they've gone to a level four lockdown and um they're having real issues with uh, rioting over there as well so uh, we would have just gone there and sat in a hotel room so they cancelled that so i'm now going to a studio a couple of times a week to, re yeah. to record it and actually do you know what it's i'm really happy the fact i'm doing it the lines is you know the pinnacle of any rugby player's career and it's an incredible um kind of emotional roller coaster it's the com combination of four teams that normally hate each other well yeah. that, sorry it's not four, four teams but the media you know hype up that we hate each other and yeah. the fans hate each other but rugby players kind of have some mutual respect but they want to make sure that they they win and there's some real you know traditional rivalries come together under one roof and play you know the best southern hemisphere sides they're in south africa at the moment they just won the first test yes uh without dating this video too much and and um, they've got a second test all to play for very exciting stuff and yeah i'm really enjoying because i'm actually sitting down and watching the rugby i wouldn't ordinarily uh watch a lot of it have a chance to look at it so i'm i'm loving it um and there's a nice combination you know once a week i get to sit down have be a rugby noise for that kind of particular period of time yeah then we get to dissect it i've just interviewed bobby skinstad for one of the best and most exciting interviews um i think we've done a good about rugby his yeah. career you know you know, play, winning a World Cup in 2007 with South Africa, he's obviously very close to the, the South Africa side, knows Razi Erasmus. So there's so much kind of stuff going on at the moment, a lot of stories behind stories. You know, uh, you know uh, for those of you who are watching this who are not just into cars but like your rugby, you know, the story of Alwyn Jones coming back, dislocating his shoulder, coming back to then lead the Lions within six weeks, like the Winter Soldier with a full bionic arm. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty special, really. Yeah, no, amazing, amazing. Uh, and look, as someone who enjoys rugby but hasn't necessarily, First cricket, I think. Yeah. Can, can, cannot stand cricket. No. <laughs> How can you play a sport for five days? I know. Based I know. on runs and the amount of times that you bat a ball, and it's a bloody draw after five days. I know. I that bit. I, but they've now created the hundred, haven't they? I think, unfortunately, <laughs> test test cricket is now is slightly going to be a thing of the past. Oh, I think with the twenty twenty and all the rest. Absolutely. Of it. So obviously, we've mentioned the Lions. Yes. Um, clearly big thing for you in the last day uh, nine twelve months was your the release of your book what a flanker yes it was uh, yeah. came out to critical acclaim um <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. Um, tell us about that. How that all came about. Yeah. So look, um, you know, I, it's going to sound again, obviously, because we're, we're doing this as an interview. So I, I don't really like talking myself up, but I, <laughs> I will. I mean, you're not really twisting my arm. I'm going to do it anyway. So this is actually my fifth book that I've written. Um, the first were on uh, health and fitness, cooking, um, diet, how to be a rugby player. This is my first kind of um, autobiography. Um, you know, a few players have done stuff earlier. I was a bit. You know, reticent to do one. I wasn't, you know, I didn't think I perhaps had the career to warrant it. But I've travelled around the world, a lot of funny stories. And I wasn't trying to write something that was going to be awe inspiring. It was meant to make people laugh, and it's, you know, it's gone unbelievably well. We've sort of written. Um, oh. oh, is that for us? Yeah. Oh. Maybe it's the police escort. I did call one in for yeah, you. 
Yeah. Yeah. I said you needed to get somewhere quick. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> so many jokes I'm going to say, but I won't this video. Um, but yeah, so I, so I basically decided to write the, the book called What a Flanker. Yeah. Obviously based on the fact that What a Wanker, just in case you didn't get a joke. Um, and we, um, it went really, really well. Uh, yeah, I think we've so far we've done over 200,000 copies. It's wow. Sunday Times bestseller. Wow. We've just got, I've just written, I've got a two book deal off the back of it. Um, two got, book deal? Yeah, I've got another one wow. called Rock, Rock Me coming out. Yeah, Rock Me is good. Yeah, Rock like like Me, I've written another book. Yeah. yeah. I've written another book. Um, and basically, the next one after that is a book on mindset because a lot of people, even though they found the humour in the stories, really kind of enjoyed how my approach to life, how yes. I dealt with things, ups and downs and lows. You have the career, I've had my fair share of sort of scandal and I've had my fair share of kind of lows and highs throughout yes. my career and yes. how I adjusted to them. So that's gone really well. It obviously comes in an audio book and as well off the back of it we released a podcast called What a Flank of a Podcast yes. where I've interviewed one of my heroes, Carl Cox, so Jimmy Carr, Jack Whitehall, um, Alan Fitzpatrick, another techno DJ, Jamie Morton, um, or Jay Morton, sorry, from SS, Who yes. Dares Wins, uh, Roman Kemp. We've got, you know, we've done so many cool interviews wow. um, over this over this time. People I'm interested in who kind of want to understand their life and what it's like, and people sort of close to me. So that's gone really well. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I, the water flank, I was surprised. It kind of think it's changed a lot of people's opinion about me. Yeah. I'm a bit like Marmite. People. You know, want to love or hate me? It's very I divide opinion. I'm not really asked about that, but it's kind of the way I am. And yeah. a lot of people, you know, come out with the same. No, I thought he was a dickhead before I met him, and then I met him, or I read the book, and I really enjoyed it. So yeah. for yeah. me, it's been a very positive um, thing, and I really enjoy it. And also, it's brought a lot of happiness to people, and kind of shed light on a lot of truths that you don't get to talk about when you're a player. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you're in the media, you don't often get to say um, what you actually think or how yes. you feel. So yes. this book was a perfect example, a bit like Alan Partridge's fictional book. Uh -huh. You know, um, when he talks, you know, with every chapter he finishes, needless to say, the last laugh. That's essentially what my book's like and as well. Did you find it hard, and did you consciously keep stuff back out of the first book, thinking you might want to put stuff into a, a no, sequel or no? No, I, mean, I actually forgot <laughs> stuff. If so, hence the second book came about. It was oh, like right. thirty stories I forgot to mention. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, which were you know, which were great. Which obviously, you know, we've done it things slightly different in the second book as well. We've kind of gone as a bit of a retrospective look because I've yes. realised I'm a bit of a dickhead, and yeah. it's about going back and talking to people in my life and getting an insight, sort of learning and talking about stories from them. Um, so we've sort of done that. But the first book, no, was very much no holds barred. There was yeah. a couple of things that, on reflection, I took out because the, the landscape we live in in 2021 and further on is is not as accepting. People are looking to cancel you for any excuse. Yes. They want to get into you. There's people with fuck all to do with sitting around just trying to get people um, fired and because they got you know they're sort of and unfortunately it's a small minority yes. but they're shouting you know we live in a world of who shouts the loudest wins. It doesn't yes. matter about facts or anything else. So I, there's stuff 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 I took out but yeah for the most part it's pretty aggressive and across the board. Yeah. Um, and I haven't been sued so far. And to be honest with you, we had three barristers read over it, no joke, and a lawyer wow. to to check it through. And uh, I covered my ass, so wow. that's why I'm still sitting here talking to you. <laughs> Fantastic. And listen, we, we can't come out uh, to have a chat and not talk about cars, clearly. Yes. So obviously, um, I think now I've probably worked on at least three or four vehicles yeah. for you over the years. Um, the first car I did was your Range Rover Sport autobiography. Yes. Um, that was a private uh, deal whereby we acquired it off uh, uh, another client of mine, um, which you still have that vehicle at the moment, yes. I believe, uh, so you love that. Um, then, uh, after your stint in a very well-known, uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of the, uh, the jungle, yeah. um, you buzzed me and said, Darren, I want to buy a, a Ferrari. Yes. Um, so about a week later, uh, we identified the right car and uh, we got the deal done and you uh, you took it. Now, obviously, you, you tend to keep your cars off social media yeah. normally, um, but obviously the Ferrari 488 GTV, which you've had now for just under two years, yeah. I'd say. Um, tell us about that, how, how was that? Well, part? I mean, I'll be honest with you, you know, my, I've always been a huge fan of cars. Um, you know, I started pretty, you know, uh, quietly in a Fiat Panda 4x4 Alpine edition, 900cc, it wasn't even a litre. The Alpine? Wow. Yeah, that nice. was, yeah, and it had a plunger to put into 4x4, and, and when the original car had, had the wheels with the tiny holes to put the winter spikes in it, which right. I thought was quite amazing. Um, and then, you know, and then I sort of had a massive journey, I've been to Golfs, Audis, I had a Porsche 911 Turbo wrapped in black, which was, you know, next level, that was incredible. Um, you know, and I've been, I was basically sponsored by Land Rover from the age of 21, 
to 34. So I've had every single model of Land Rover you could possibly um, imagine, every kind of machination, every kind of Vogue and Sport, and absolutely loved it. So that was a no-brainer to get another one of them. I really yes. enjoy them. Yes. It, it, my back's an issue for me. Seating position's a real issue, so yes. cramming into smaller cars. I actually had an SL500, which I really liked, but was Merc, but was, um, you know, messed my back up. Um, I, <laughs> I had. <laughs> I've had a couple of Rolls Royces. I've had the Rolls Royce Ghost. Yeah, I had. I did some stuff for them. Yeah, I've had, I've had the um, I had the Rolls Royce Ghost, and I have the uh, which one? I had the red black badge. What? And, I, and I, I mean, they, I had that for uh, about three months. Yeah. And that, I mean, I looked at the price after they spoke to it. They were like, "That's seven hundred grand car." I was like, uh, or six hundred grand car." So I was like, "Okay." Yeah, I'm not sure I'll be permanently staying in that because that's a house on wheels. That, that can be sorted by the way. Yeah, I'm not, you can. I, do, I know you could fix anything. Um, so, yeah, and then, uh, you know, my wife has had a bit of a midlife crisis. Um, I, you know, I don't want to be, there's certain things I am showing about on social media, yeah. but cars yeah. and stuff, I think, you know, especially when we got it, the world was going through a bit of a difficult period of time. I was just about to come into it. I didn't want to rub it into anyone's faces. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you did amazing. We went to, um, the dealer that had it, we yeah. looked through it, we took it for a ride, you yeah. made the whole process super simple, you made it really easy for me to understand. Obviously for someone like myself, you know, I'm not a footballer, I didn't have the level of cash to be able to go mad. Yeah. You know, it was about really important to understand what the monthly was, what the residual value was gonna be, yeah. how we could make it work, what the deposit was gonna be, what the right model was. Yeah. Cause so many people just don't come to people like yourself who have the, A, have the knowledge with the, with the finances, but also the knowledge around um, you know, what's gonna hold its value. You know, you see so many people jumping into McLarens or jumping into, you know, or Aston Martins and everything else that, or certain Ferrari Martins, just wondering why, when they come to sell it, yeah. it's worth half what they paid for. So yeah. it was kind of really important for me to do that. I didn't want to be lumbered with a car that um, had lost its value. And so we went through the process, you know, and actually after that it was seamless. I've, I've loved it, I've had it for two years. Yeah. It's put a smile on my face every time I've driven it, just like the Porsche did. I, you know, yes. you know driving, I spend a lot of time in my car. Like, you know, the Ranger, I spend, I would say up to six hours a day in one going backwards and forwards to London. We li I live in the Midlands, I'm all yes. over the place. And I wanted something to to drive it and and to, you know to really enjoy, it. and that was yes. an amazing car, you know. Yes. And, I, and I, I, you know, I said I love the Rolls Royces; they're incredible. They're so much speed, but they're so comfortable. Yes. You sort of want to be driven in them. Yes. You know, if you want something to hold on by the seat of your pants, then the Ferrari kind of does that with the beauty and elegance that goes with it. So I, yeah. Yeah. I, I loved it. My friends, you know, a lot of smiles, a lot of kind of good days in it, putting the music on and driving around it. Yeah. So. And I think, you know, for me next is to, to move on to something else, really, um, yeah. and just to keep the, keep the buzz going. Yeah, and just to touch on the spec of your Ferrari 488 GTV, so uh, the colour uh, is blue posy, uh, which is a heritage colour, and uh, it had a heritage interior as well, full atelier uh, heritage interior in a, in a very beautiful dark tan. Yeah. Uh, so, James, so after the Ferrari, uh, you've yeah. loved the Ferrari, what are you thinking to go for next? Uh, well, my dream car is the Lamborghini Aventador, if I'm completely honest with you. Right. Um, I think that, that'll be something that maybe you can help me with and get involved in. Uh, no, don't, don't mention the Lambo, because... Why? <laughs> you can't afford them. Fuck off! <laughs> oh, well, we can't put that in the video. No, well, can I not? I thought I could. Fucking Aventador, what are you doing? All right, all right. <laughs> relax. <laughs> Relax. You're, um, not, you're not a fucking retired football. All right, all right, all right. Um, I mean, look, I promise you, I mean, look, that's kind of my, my dream car, but we, you know, obviously it's a bit pie in the sky. I think for me, uh, I'd love to go to Porsche. I had, I had a great experience with them before. Yeah. I think the 911.2 Turbo S would be great. The new shape ones I really enjoy. I just need to yeah. go out to the garage and have a look. Still but, big buttons, I'm still big buttons. Yeah, yeah, well, listen, I'm a big man. You are a big, you are big, a big lad. Big, big, We're not gonna big, deny that. Big, boy, <laughs> big, big arm, small wallet. Classic ah, James. Fucking. Yeah. I was gonna say, Little dick short, arm, yeah. short arms, yeah. Yeah. fucking deep Coming pockets. from you, Irish <laughs> fucking hell, honestly. You did it, you did the old, <laughs> the Irish hacker. Sorry, I've lost my wallet again. Have you? That's funny, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen it like it, honestly. <laughs> Mate, anyway, you're as tight as cramp chief, honestly. <laughs> I've never seen it like I've it. I've never heard that one. You're so tight, you squeak in your little loafers. I've never, oh, honest to God, coming at me. <laughs> right, come on. <laughs> no, no, no car. Fucking put that in there. Honestly. Tell me, tell me. Ebenezer. <laughs> right, so listen, you've got to get a song on here. No, so I'm not singing. Oh, I, man, I said we'd have to sing. I never sing. Come on. Dude, I said we'd have to sing. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. Is there, 
There's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. You're trying hard not to show it, baby. But, but baby, believe me, I know it. You've lost that loving feeling. Oh, that loving feeling. Bring back that loving feeling, now it's gone, 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 oh, oh, bum, bum. What are we doing? <laughs> I said no singing, I said no singing, I can't that. sing, I've got an awful voice. <laughs> Don't try uh, and mug me off now, that's it, we're done. <laughs> right, you go, I told you, you have a free 25 minutes of video, then I start charging. It's normally cost, well. it's, cost it's, it's like going around with a fan, it's like, it's like a, a fan letting me, fan drive me around, and I normally charge a five grand for it. So you're you're doing very well, I have this 25 minutes free. Oh man, well listen, we nearly got you home, so uh, thanks. look, thanks again for coming out, it's been amazing. Uh, I don't think I've laughed this hard in a long time, so. It looks but, like we need to get out more, Darren, if this, <laughs> if this is the peak of your humor, <laughs> oh man, well listen, thank you again. Oh, tractor's trying to kill us. But uh, guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, thanks to James for being an amazing sport as always, amazing client, amazing friend, so uh, it is appreciated. Thank you, um, and if you could start like, if any sponsors of people watch here um, could follow me on social media so perhaps I could afford that Ventor, make a young rugby post dream come true. Thank you. All right guys, cheers for now, ciao.